Hi, so fluency in the language of music involves being fluent rhythmically and also tonally. And the way that I teach fluency and tonality is to have a vocabulary, a basic vocabulary of harmonic blocks. There are 12 major harmonic blocks, 12 minor harmonic blocks. There are a couple of um, whole tone blocks and or augmented blocks, if you like, and three diminished blocks. Those are our blocks. What do they sound like? Well, they're very familiar sounds. That's the whole point. So like a minor harmonic block sounds like this. Here's another one. Here's another one. So they are sort of washes of minor sound, a minor harmonic block. A major harmonic block sounds major. Kind of a, a wash of major harmonic sound. Here's another one. Here's another one. So, harmonic blocks are not melody, they're not chords, they're certainly not notes or intervals. So a harmonic block is, is a very recognisable sound. So, so I'm, I'm, I believe that we don't have the ability to hear chords or intervals, and certainly not notes, in real time when we're listening to music. And this is why it can't produce fluency. I mean, I can sort of illustrate that if I play you an interval like this. If you hear that interval as part of this major harmonic block, it's very rec the block's very recognisable. So if you play me this, and I've got that block in my mind, as a fluent musician, I know what it is without having to define it as a major sixth. That's easy as well if I need to say it's a major sixth, but that's not what I recognise. I recognise it as part of a harmonic block. Yeah? If I hear that interval as part of, say, this harmony. It's an A harmony block. And that note is an auxiliary note, so an extra note that's not in the block that wants to resolve. Yeah? So that's in the harmony block. That's not. That is. So I, I hear that interval as part of that harmony. So we can hear harmony as it goes by in real time. Now, my job as a teacher is to get people to tag or, or pay attention to and know which harmonic block it is. So they've got to hear the harmonic blocks rather than listening to the melody, rather than listening to the tune, certainly not listening to the chords or trying to do any theory stuff around chords and intervals. I want them to know what harmonic blocks they're playing. So all the major and minor harmonic blocks and the diminished and augmented harmonic blocks, they live in the keyboard in very specific places and we simply learn them as, as sort of blocks in the, in the keyboard map. The keyboard map is nice and fixed and mathematical and, you know, it's a really super, superbly designed, um, not that anyone designed it, but it's a superbly de designed instrument, instrument map, harmonic tonal map. Um, so all the blocks, all the harmonic blocks live in that map, in the map of the keyboard, in very specific places that we can learn. But of course, it's not enough just to know what they are physically. We have to know them as sounds. And we have to first of all hear. So if I play some music, just fairly normal music, I'm going to make it fairly clearly harmonic. Um, can you hear when it changes harmonic block? So it doesn't matter what the melody does, there's a change of harmony. And 
it goes back. And it'll change again. And again. And again. We can hear that. It's almost like the light changes, isn't it? It's like, like the, 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 the atmosphere changes. It's a, a shift in perspective when we shift harmony. So harmony is it's like, it's colour, like colour. So what do I mean by it's like colour? Well, if melody is like an object, I'm thinking in terms of, of, of drawing, painting, art, doing art, two-dimensional art. When we do two-dimensional art, we have to learn to draw or paint shapes and colours basically, lines, shapes, and colours, light and shade, maybe a little bit of texture. And these shapes that we fill in with, with colour, light and shade, maybe a little bit of texture, are what we should see when we look at something that we want to draw or paint. Shapes, lines and colours. So colour is obviously a big part of that. What we tend to get wrong when we, when we draw and paint is that we tend to try and draw the object that we're drawing. We have a sort of almost symbolic idea of an object when we try and draw the object. But you see, that doesn't work. If I was trying to draw a fire engine or a red rose, you know, a fire engine, a fire truck, red, a red rose, red, you have to not be too distracted by the objects being so different to realise they have the same colour. So B minor, the harmonic block of B minor, is like a colour. So if I play something that uses the B minor harmonic block, I could play something completely different. Red Rose, Fire Engine, both red. Two little extracts of music, completely different, both B minor. Still B minor. Still B minor. Still B minor. We can hear that. We can hear B minor, but we've just got to work hard not to be distracted by how it goes, the melody, what I call the karaoke sense of the music. We live in, I suppose, a karaoke culture where, because we're, we're not really taught to be fluent musically, we, we tend to be given an lot, awful lot of code, decoding theory, um, or we just play for muscle memory, kind of basic memory. The karaoke sense of music is what kicks in, sort of mimetic. We, we, we mimic, we, we hear music and we can replay the music in our head. If we actually recognised music in terms of how it goes, the karaoke sense, if I play something you've never heard before, you wouldn't understand, understand it until you'd heard it a few times. If the decoding model, the theory model were true, I'd have to send you the theory. You do understand it and of course you understand the rhythm and the tonality and the thing that you hear, albeit unconsciously, the things that you hear to understand tonality are these harmonic blocks the, and they progress, they move from one to another. So B minor might move to F sharp minor, then it might move to G and then it might move to D. Then it might move to C sharp minor and then G sharp minor and then D flat. And we understand that what we call a progression, the harmonic progression. Now, why is it not chords? People say to me, what's the difference between harmonic blocks and chords? Well, a chord is a very specific cluster of notes. So here's a D flat chord. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. They're very different from each other, but they're all part of a D-flat block. So there's a, there's a kind of, you know, theoretical overlap with, with how we think of, of chords, uh, chords and, and, and that way of looking at harmony in terms of chords and the way I teach it, which is uh, harmonic block. So the harmonic block is, is right across the whole range of the, of the keyboard map. And we have to know that the pattern of that harmonic block is a unified structure that plugs into the whole map of the keyboard. And it's a wash of sound, whereas a chord is a specific sound object. I sometimes think, you know, if you think of like water with like fish swimming in it, we have to look at the water, not the fish. We have to hear the, the, the wash of colour. Not the objects in it. 
at least not to hear the objects within it too much. That's the thing. We've got to learn to bring our attention to something which might appear to be background. Now, I think what's happened with music is that, you know, it, we've become more and more sophisticated in a way in terms of the music that we play, and we can lose sight of things that are almost primal and basic, like harmonic blocks. The basis of a harmonic block is really just the root and the fifth, so it actually is an interval. <laughs> Although I would never think of it as an interval, still as I say, think of it as a, a harmonic wash. So if I play some roots, C, some fifths, Gs, we get this phenomenon, this ancient earthy sound called a drone, a bare fifth. And this sense that everything is kind of rooted in that fifth. The root is the home, the fifth is sort of like an extra thing. And then you might hear, you know, a voice come in. And those sort of inflections moving away from the roots would give rise to all sorts of scales. The fifth is the basic interval. The closest relationship on the keyboard is from C to G, or G to C. F to B flat, or F to C. These are all fifth relationships, perfect fifths, perfect fifths, and they're inversion perfect fourths. That's a very theoretical way of looking at it. You can just hear it, can't you? So any scale that I play is just rooted in that harmony. And in earthy, ancient sort of music, there would tend to be one harmony running through a piece of music, one harmonic block. It's lovely putting the major and the minor third in to your bare fifth to really tune into it. So you've got your root, and your fifths, and it could become major. Roots. Fifths, it could become minor. So this is a natural, I would just sort of say an inbuilt sense that we have. We hear harmonic blocks. Um, all you have to do to become fluent is learn to actually listen for them, tag them, think of them as actual vocabulary, like the words that I'm saying to you now in English are conveying meaning, the harmonic blocks our vocabulary. The shapes that we play, which are kind of rhythms that then walk through the harmonic block. So here's a harmonic block. If I walk a rhythm through that harmonic block, I can include auxiliary notes that's not in the block. So there are very specific places where the harmonic block lives and then the shapes weave in and around those places that form the harmonic block within the map and the rhythms sort of turn into those shapes. So we have to learn not to tag the surface or the, the you know, certainly not the notes, not even the melody. Tagging melody, listening to the melody of what we're playing can be very distracting. Why is melody distracting. Well, melody is a kind of mirage. I mean, here's a melody. You know that melody? I could change it. I could do different harmony. You still recognise the melody, but I've really changed the music. You can hear that I've changed the harmony. I could do this. Could do this. This is now in five. You might say it's still the same melody. So melody is, is a sort of very fluid, variable, not a very concrete thing. Harmonic blocks, on the other hand, are very solid, very reliable things that we can tag tag meaning know very very well feel them know them know them deeply inside us 12 majors 12 minors diminished i mentioned 
There's three of them. So one, two, three, and then the augmented blocks, which I often think of as the whole tone blocks I play. All of those notes sounds like a wash of harmony to me. The other whole tone. So three diminished blocks, two whole, whole tone blocks, 12 minors, 12 majors. That's basically your harmonic or tonal language. And learning to hear that is what you have to do. It's what I have to make all my students do so that they're really listening for that and knowing where those sounds live. Does it change the way you hear music when you are tonally fluent and you tag harmonic blocks? Not really. I wouldn't say so because, as I said before, you already understand music in those terms unconsciously. It does make it clear what the music is. You can imagine playing it as you're listening. You know what's being played. You could all, you can write it out when you have the literacy as well. So it just gives you that level of skill. You don't need things like perfect pitch. You don't need to do loads of musicianship training. All of that theory stuff is easy when you're fluent, but it's not necessary to become fluent. Tonal fluency is built on 12 major harmonic blocks, 12 minor harmonic blocks, three diminished blocks, and two whole tone blocks. And that's it.